hello guys and welcome to my channel in this video i will be showing you that how to link the api that we create in the previous video in this series now i will be making this simple ui so that you can understand very clearly now first of all let me show you that i am already running my python api on my local host and i will be calling this from my flutter app now if you don't know how our api work then please kindly watch our previous video so that you can understand how our api work now here i am searching inspiration you can search anything here and when you click get quotes you will get related quotes in your flutter app as you can see right here i got many many quotes on this inspiration and you can search any name any author name anything that you can search in brainycodes.com and it will shoot the exact same codes basically this codes is scraped from the brainycodes.com using our api that we create in the previous video now you already know that what we will be making so without wasting any more time let's get started i will be explaining step by step but in case you don't understand any specific part then you can ask any question in the comment below and i will try to explain it now if you already have this api then uh, you can open it and here mention the port number if you don't have this api then please download it from the link given below from my uh, github repo now once you download the api then please run the api using any id of your choice you can also run the api using command or uh, terminal if you are using mac now once your api is running then you will see this message running on http and your local host and the fort that you uh, mention in the fort number that you gave in the fort number now first of all create new flutter project or clone this repository so that you can get the exact same project that i am uh, using right now now first of all if you open pubspec.yml file you will find here that i already here um, type this line of code and this is the HTTP dependency that we will be using to call our API from our Flutter app. Now once you uh, add it under Cupertino icons then click package get and here in the terminal you will see uh, process finish with exit code 0. Now what this means is that our dependency is successfully downloaded. Now you have to import your dependency in the project. Uh, in the main dot dot file i will be talking about it in a few minutes now first of all when our app run uh, it will call my app and my app is a stateless widget as you can see right here and it will return material app now material app has a property called home and we will be calling here our home screen now again home is a stateless widget and here uh, we are displaying a scaffold we are returning a scaffold and scaffold has a property app bar now first of all we are changing the background color property of the app bar and we are making it blue now again here the second property is app bar and here we are displaying text uh, which will be the title of the app bar now scaffold is another property called body and here we are calling our main screen now our main screen is a stateful widget and here we are declaring three variables now the first variable is atom count and here we will be storing how many quotes that we get from our api suppose if we get 26 quotes from our api then this zero will be override uh, in this zero we will store here 26 now here is a second variable json's response and we will be talking about in few seconds now the third variable is here is query and we will be storing our user query here in this variable now if we look our uh, function get quotes which is of type asynchronous which is asynchronous function and it's take query and we are making a url based on the user query now here i am using 10.0.2.2 instead of localhost and that is because this is localhost for android if you use 127.0.1 then it will not work now we need to call this url which is made based on the user query and we will be calling it using http package uh, that we add in our pubspec.yml file so first of all import it if you don't have already imported here i am importing it as a prefix and i will be using http dot to access the method of http package now here if you want to call this url then we will be using http dot get url which will return http dot response type 
and we will be storing that in our response variable and here i am awaiting on the http.get url method now here i am awaiting on it because uh, it is an asynchronous operation and that's why we make our function asynchronous and we are awaiting here because um, http.get will take some time to return the result it may take a little longer if your internet connection is slow now here i am checking app response dot status code is 200 here basically i am checking app the operation is successful then what i am doing uh, here is that i am calling set state now here i am assigning a value to json's response uh, which is initially null when we declare it and here we are making uh, we are assigning the value convert dot json decode and here we are passing response dot body now here uh, basically it's decode the json's so that we can use it in our app and the second variable atom count we are also assigning the value to it and that value will be based on the length of the json's response now if our json has 20 codes then our json's dot length will give us 20 and we'll be using that and we will be uh, building our ui based on atom count now you will understand that how the atom count affect our ui but let explain this two line of code here i am commenting this because we don't need it right here but we will be using this in uh, the ui part now the first line of code is returning the author name will be decoding the author name and the second line of code will be returning the code text now here as you can see our build function will be called and here uh, we are using center widget and we are using single child scroll view as a child of a center widget and then we are using column and we are using here the single child scroll view so that we can award the pixel overflow and we can scroll through the list of uh, codes now here if we look our column then our column has a two children uh, which is container and the first container is pursuing the course and the second one is pursuing the button and the text field now the first container has a dynamic height based on the uh, atom count at the atom count is zero which is initially zero when we start our app uh, now then the height of the container will be 50 and same for the child app the atom count is zero then we will be showing loading instead of list view dot builder now here if the atom count is greater than zero then we will be changing the height from 50 to 350 and here the child will be also rendered different now here first if the atom count is zero then we are showing text loading now if the atom count is greater than zero then we will be showing list view dot builder now list view dot builder has two property atom builder and atom count that we will be using the atom builder property takes context and index as a parameter and return us whatever widget the user want now here i am returning a container and here i am decorating my container a little bit but i will be not explaining it as this is not the ui tutorial but this is uh, the tutorial in which we call our api so i will be focusing on that now our container has a child which is column and here i am specifying that cross axis alignment dot start now here what this mean is that all our text will be left aligned now here our column has two children uh, and both of them are text widget now the first text widget is for quotes and the second one is for author name now here i am decoding the quotes base on the index number here i am I, here i am displaying the quotes base on the index number now instead of hard coded number i am passing here the index uh, which is passed in the atom builder property now here index will change from zero to the atom count which is the second property of the list view dot builder now here if the atom count is 20 or 50 then the index will start from zero and the last index will be 49 now here suppose if we pass different number or app our atom count has different number then same will be happen for that now here we are assigning the value to atom count and this atom value count is based on the number of codes suppose if we have 20 codes then atom count will have 20 and uh, our index will start from 0 to 19 now here we have a second container uh, which has column as a child and here i am displaying text field and button now first of all the text field has hint text and some decoration 
Now text field has also a property on change and here it's provide us the value that the user enter in the field. Now here we are assigning the query variable a value and that value will be whatever the user type. Now here we are printing the value that the user type and let's check our app, app it is working or not. Now here as you can see whatever I type show in the terminal. Now we can do that also using the second property of the text field which is on submitted. Uh, it will also take the value and we can do our action right here we will be just simply printing the value here so that we know how it print the value now if we run our app and here as uh, suppose if i type please subscribe now this text will be not print printing instantly as on change but once we click this tick mark on the keyboard it will print that um, text that we get from our user now that's all for the text field we will be using on change property but you can also use the unsubmitted property now one last thing and that is the button get quotes now whenever the user click get quotes uh, it will call the function that we create a few minutes ago now that function will be called in on press property of the button now here you can see i am passing query as a parameter and that is because query is required as a parameter now here i am assigning the value to query and here you can see i am uh, calling the get quotes function now here i am also calling set state and making the atom count zero i am making the atom count zero so that if the user already search anything and there is quotes on the UI that quotes will disappear when again the user search something and there will be showing loading instead for that reason I made the atom count zero and I am calling sit stat so that the stateful widget stat updates now that's all for this video i hope that you like the video and if you do like the video then please kindly subscribe to my channel for more videos like this